Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez with SolidBox, and today we're going to take a look at Power Surfacing 2.0 Beta, and we want to focus on existing SolidWorks geometry. Now, 2.0 Beta saw the new addition of some tool sets that allow us to constrain to existing geometry. This means that you can bring in faces, surfaces, things like that from SolidWorks into the power surfacing environment. That allows you to do things like constrain to edges, constrain to faces, and use the geometry, the existing geometry you have, and really tweak and play around with what you can do inside of that sub demodeling environment. Now we already did a basic example with a teapot. We showed you how you could create a primitive, how you could cut some of those edges off and then constrain it to an imported reference. Now that was a fairly simple example and that'll work for a lot of cases. It'll work for things like golf clubs or obviously cups and teapots and things of that nature, but really anything that you can put that to use in. The more complicated examples are ones like this Pagani Zonda. Now this is a model I drew a couple years ago in SolidWorks, completely using the SolidWorks surfacing tools. So of course, this thing has a very long history tree. If we go up to tools and we take a look at feature statistics, we have 813 features. There's currently 42 solids and 18 surfaces in this model. Rebuild time, 73 seconds. That's not very good. If you want to tweak something in this model, Obviously, it's going to take a while to update, and there's a very good chance that it's going to fail. But what I want to do is I want to take a look at how these new power surfacing tool sets can help us do things like manipulate existing SOLIDWORKS models. The thing I want to focus on in this specific example is redoing some of the geometry in this fender. So first, I want to turn off my shadows, and I want to turn off perspective. It's going to make things a little bit easier for us. Now, this original fender shape, you can see where the divisions are and what was created. This part was created secondary to the side fender, and then this part was sort of blended around. Now, I want to keep the side fender geometry, and I want to keep this geometry, and obviously everything around it. But what I want to do is actually bulge this up a bit more. Let's say that we found out that we didn't have the clearance inside here that we needed. So we need to remodel this. Now, of course, in SOLIDWORKS, that has to go way back in the feature tree. If I bring this feature tree up and we look at the surface, it's showing us a split line, but really this feature is pretty far up in the tree. It's probably somewhere way, 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 way back up in here. Now, I don't know exactly where it is, but like I said, it's buried in this feature tree somewhere. So that presents an interesting problem. How do we go about redoing this? Well, with the old tool set, what you would do is delete that or maybe delete part of it. You might trim it and leave just the edges that you need here and then create a new version. That means multiple sketches for guide curves and doing boundary surface, maybe a filled surface in a certain area just to get that geometry. Well, now there's a much easier way. And since I've done all this talking without actually doing any modeling yet, let's go ahead and jump right in. So now we want to create a new planar surface. Now this might seem a little silly at first to create a planar surface, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a planar surface underneath this part. Now I'm going to change the dimensions just a little bit. Let's go ahead and make this thing a little bit wider. Let's make it 2000 millimeters long. That's a little bit more than we need, but it's going to be pretty close to the size that we need. I'm not going to do any additional divisions yet. I want to take care of all that by using insert loops or manually inserting an edge. So now that I have this basic layout here, go ahead and create it. I'm going to select it and I want to move it as close as I can to where it needs to be. So I'm just going to pull it up into space. I'm going to rotate around, get it close to where it needs to be. And what I want to do is import a reference. So I'm going to go to my power surfacing tab. I'm going to go to import reference and I want to select this surface here. So you can see it brings in my surface and now I have a nice reference, which means I can snap to faces. I can snap to edges and I can even snap to the vertices in the corner. So what this is, or what this is telling me, is that I need to start moving some points around to get them closer. It's important to know that when you start moving these points around and you start trying to snap to existing geometry, it's going to snap to the closest point. So it's in your best benefit to get these points in, in the right area, in the right ballpark, so that you don't have them snapping to the wrong regions. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this one down rotate it around, make sure that it's pretty close to where I need it to be. And then this last one here, we'll go ahead and pull down, pull forward, get it as close as I can. So now what we want to do is we're going to take these points and we're going to constrain them to a vertex. Now when I say constrain to a vertex, it pulls it down into this point. 
we don't see the surface anymore because there are no divisions in the middle. And it's very important that we don't have any divisions in the middle. And the reason I did that is because I don't want them snapping anywhere and I don't want them to create any additional geometry that I don't need. So we're going to snap all these edges to vertices. And now what I've done is I've taken that patch and I've put it as close as I could into, into that actual geometry there. Now, there are certain times where you really can't see what's going on here. It might make a good time to change the display, maybe display the sub D. So you'll see what's happening when we display the sub D. This surface is looking a little crazy. We need to select these vertices and we need to give them a hard edge. We need to have them full weight. I'm going to take this edge, give it a hard edge. I'll take this edge, give it a hard edge, and this one as well, and give it a hard edge. So what this is doing is it's taking the geometry, and instead of making that nice, smooth, rounded out corner there, it's actually giving us something that we can constrain. So now I want to constrain this to an edge. It pulled that edge down and constrained it to the geometry that we imported. I'll do the same on the back end. And you notice that we're getting an interesting selection, but we'll go ahead and constrain that to an edge. We'll grab this edge, constrain to edge, and then the last one we have is over here and constrained to an edge. So now what we've done is we've taken that surface and we've constrained it to the edges. Now you'll notice that it's not looking real great and that's just because we don't have the control over it yet. I want to make sure that we check these vertices. We'll go ahead and change our selection process. Check that vertex, make sure it's got 100 weight on it. Check that vertex. That one has a zero weight, so we want to make sure that it has 100 weight as well. Check this vertice, make sure that it's 100. Check this one, it's 100 as well. All right, so now that we have the weight of each handle, this means that we can start adding loops. Go ahead and select an end, hold down the A key, and we can add loops wherever we need them. So these loops will give us some additional control. Hold down the A key, and again, we can place a loop wherever we need it. So as we're looking at this, you can see that the geometry is starting to change. We can move these edges around, and we can really affect what the surface is going to look like. We can add additional ones in the middle if we need to do things like pull this geometry up and give it more of a bulge. So now let's go ahead and exit, and let's take a look at what's being created inside SolidWorks. All right, so you can see that quickly and easily, without the two-minute intro that I gave you guys, Quickly and easily, we were able to create a new fender that has a different shape to it. You can see the one on the left side, which is the original one. The one on the right side has more of a bulge closer to where the tire would be. Now, of course, we have a lot of control over this. We can always go back, we can edit the power body, and we can do things like move curves around if we need to add additional curvature, maybe in this area. We can take individual points, we can take individual edges, we can take individual faces and pull that geometry out as needed. Now, in a case like this, what I would most likely do is I would take out this individual section here as well as the fender section and I do a new power body for the entire thing because this geometry isn't really ideal here. But you can see that we have a lot of control over that service and we don't have to go back filtering through the feature tree to try to get that information. So. A very welcome addition to Power Surfacing 2.0 Beta, allowing you to constrain to your existing SOLIDWORKS geometry, whether it's a solid and a split face, or if it's a surface like this specific example. We can now create new geometry based on our existing geometry. If you guys have any questions on this, please email me, matt at mysolidbox.com, and thanks for watching.